Hi, my name is Mass and I'm from Flowhow. In this video I want to show you how to start up your first analysis in uh, Molex 3D um, using uh, version 2024 in this case, but uh, could also be another version. But uh, I opened the um, studio and then I want to create a project. I can hit new here or I can import a model as a project, but I will just hit new. And then I'll give it a name. Please don't use uh, double spacing or weird uh, names, but uh, just use uh, uh, ordinary, normal, ordinary signs. I don't. Uh, first simulation. And now <coughs> I have my project tree here, my model tree. There's nothing in my model tree now. Um, and uh, yeah, then I'll start uh, to import a model. I can go to model import or I can just use this one. Secure that it, this is uh, injection molding and solid. I'm not showing you how to use eDesign, that's even easier and you're using, uh, uh, for example, STL files as input files. But uh, I'll import here, I'll take uh, this part. And now we have a gray part, we have to uh, give it a, some kind of uh, attribute and I can do that by uh, double clicking, go to attribute or whatever, I'll just use attribute and then click on it and say this is a part. In this case I only want to show you how to put up the analysis with just a simple part and uh, or a part and a simple uh, runner gate system. Then I'll um, add a gate here. I'll just uh, Hit escape if you are into one uh, um, menu that you want to uh, get get out of. But I'll just hit the gate. And in this case, I can use this uh, snap function down here. Maybe yours looks a bit different, but uh, that's because in the preferences, um, I have this snap. I use the classic mode. But anyway, <coughs> gate, I put a gate um, uh, on endpoint here. I, that's the center, that's okay for me now. Okay. And um, you can change the dimensions afterwards. If I, oh, that was not the case. If I right click, edit attribute, two millimeters max. Gets a bit bigger. <laughs> Um, yeah. Then uh, actually, we have our model now. We don't use uh, cooling in this case, but uh, be aware when you calculate, then you have uniform uh, temperature during the whole whole process. Also, for the high cores, you will not have any heat heating of these cores. Um, yeah. I'll put on a mesh now. Um, secure. I'll give it a seeding first. Here, yeah, seeding. And the seeding is approximately. Normally, I give it around uh, the wall thickness, maybe something like that. Of course, it depends. If it's a really huge part, I'll work with the mesh uh, a bit more, but in this case it's quite okay part. So I'll try it like this, apply, and what I'm looking for is are the holes, uh, the round thing represented okay by by this. Uh, I'll hit yes, 
and yes and I'll go to preferences again mesh solid I have uh, the settings like this you can put on this one but then it makes all the all the um, curvature, curvature uh, features uh, um, it will optimize the mesh over this um, yes I'll go to parameter secure that I run with ah you saw that 11 layers that's not necessary if you don't have any special um, parts or special processes the normal thing is uh, five boundary layers I put it that uh, put it to five on the part I just check the run it's like this now it's um, saved these settings and it will use this the next time also so um, I'll start generating now and um, surface mesh we have to have a closed surface mesh at the start and I'll just uh, set a pinpoint here by just one left click and it will uh, put a pin that means it's a break it will only make the surface mesh and then it will stop so uh, if you hit this one you'd get out of the um, function but uh, hit generate and what I'm looking for now is the mesh does it look quite okay I got a tick mark here saying that the mesh is fine um, it looks quite okay what I'm looking for is if the um, part is represented by the geometry Oh, sorry if the geometry is represented by the mesh so you don't have a um, square hole if there's a round hole and also the edges here and the blends are okay represented you can optimize that with the mesh seeding but in this case it's not necessary if you get a um, uh, a mark here that says uh, there's some problems you have to go to a fixed mesh here if for example I had a hole in this one I could just make a hole you can see then I got the uh, oops I got a warning and I have to go to fix mesh and say fill the hole this hole and enter and now I'm back zero 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 in this check list and if I go to generate you can see now I got the tick mark again so now I need a solid mesh we pointed out which kind of solid mesh we wanted in the parameters so it's just uh, clicking here like this I'll wait with the final check because um, we'll just have a look at the mesh and if I go to tools there's one called chisel here I will try to take a bite of this and then you can see which kind of mesh we ended out with this is a quite good mesh where you have the boundary layers mesh which are extruded uh, Tria mesh triangles extruded and then we have it uh, connected with the uh, tet mesh inside here this um, if you have a mesh like this this is uh, um, very good I'll click the chisel again and to be able to uh, I'll go back to home to be able to put in material now we need the uh, final check the final check takes every every geometry out of it and only saves the mesh which are used in the simulation so I go to mesh and take a final check here 
and then it asks for opening direction. This is only important uh, when you need to look at the clamping force, but um, you, yeah, you can just take the clamping force in different directions, so it's not that important. And it writes it's uh, ready for simulation. So uh, now we have to put on uh, material. I go here, and um, I can double click here, and the material here. I can go to material wizard. If you have a specific material, then uh, you can try to find it. Molex database. You have a lot of different materials. If I want this in a PA66, for example, yeah, I don't know. It 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 really doesn't matter which one. I'll just take a chateau. I right mark it, right click, and say add to project. Close and I close this one. Now the material is defined as this one. So I go back here and um, the process. <coughs> now we need to put up the process. I'll just double click here or click up here. And I use uh, for the, these kind of uh, simulations, I use CA mode. And um, then I put in um, uh, some limitations of the machine, uh, my molding machine, and I don't want any restriction in the filling pressure. So this is not the pressure that is used. It's only what the machine are capable of uh, delivering. So I use 5,000 bar and the packing pressure, I don't need more than 1,000 bar. So I give in that. And then, um, I have the filling time. I also uh, have a video of how to define the process uh, defined by the by the simulation results. But anyway, uh, the first uh, time I get uh, the filling time, um, of course, I have a bit knowledge about how it should be. But very small parts like uh, earplugs or something like that. Uh, not below 0.3 of a second because it's really not possible uh, for a real injection machine to do that. But um, 0.3 to 0.8 of a second is normal, and and um, for medium parts like uh, could be, uh, yeah, I don't know, um, lids for a small food container or something. Um, around uh, 0.8 to 2 and bigger parts like um, yeah, some uh, cover to electronics or something uh, is 2 and below and uh, over that but also it this also depends a lot on the on the wall thickness but in this case I, I just give one second then you can profile the packing will not do that um switch over uh i'll just let it be um the packing time i'll put that in it may, may just put it in a bit too long you can say but then you can ask what is a bit too long um i would there's a good rule of thumb saying around three times um, the wall thickness in second order gives around a roughly guess on the packing time. So um, in this case, it's uh, uh, one and a half millimeter. So it's around two, which is uh, in uh, 1.5, 2.25 or something times three. Uh, three was the first uh, factor and. 2.25 is uh, 1.5 in second in the power in in second order, so uh, that's around eight, ten seconds. So I'll just give it ten seconds, and then the, this 
profiling of the packing. It's very important that you refer to machine pressure, otherwise you're not in control of your packing pressure. So uh, in this case, I'll always start with a. I'll change this to bar versus time. I always start with a straight, simple uh, profiling, and then you can't call it a profiling. But uh, in this case, maybe 400 bar for 10 seconds. Okay. Melt temperature, that is the temperature on this face. Mold temperature, that's the uniform uh, temperature of the mold. And it's uh, it's related to this uh, um, temperature. So I can't, if I don't have cooling channels, I can't get um, hot spots in uh, my mold. It's just a uniform uh, mold temperature. The next one is uh, cooling. As I don't have any cooling, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. But this cooling time can have a small effect on the packing calculation because it calculates the shrinkage until end of cool. So um, I'll just put in uh, 10 seconds. It doesn't matter so much in this case. Next, and now I put up the process, and then I have to choose the analysis here. I just double click this one. You can also go up to analysis here and scroll down. In this case, I want a filling, and on top of that, a packing, and at the end, the wharf analysis. So I take this one. And then I have the computation here. I have a video that shows what is the recommended settings for this also. But um, you can see what I will run this with. I have uh, the filling here. That is the, the filling. And then the packing. I have uh, 19 uh, increments in the packing. So I get the 19, 20 results of, uh, for example, molten coal. Uh, I don't. This one is okay to get a very simple uh, overview of the wall thickness in the part. I run, hit run with fibers. If you have fiber material, you have to use it. Normally, I use this one and these two. Um, about cooling, I don't have anything because I don't want to. I have chosen not to calculate the cooling. And on the warp side, uh, I'll tick everything on, and in this case, I'll use the enhanced warp like this. And now I just have to run the simulation and uh, look at the results. This is a bit about how to set up the analysis. Okay, bye bye.